Hey everyone and welcome to a brand new class. Hope you guys are well. Uh, I want to do a multi-part series on understanding and then exploring a quintuplet. Now I kind of felt like when I was younger, growing up understanding subdivisions, that a lot of material kind of skipped out on the quintuplet. Uh, they're very good at quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, triplets, sextuplets, you know there's loads of content on that but there's not much on quintuplets. So I thought I'd address that today and get you guys up and running with this multi-part series. So before we even get started on the kit, uh, we're gonna do example one behind the practice pad. Okay, so before we go in deep on playing quintuplets on the drum set, it's definitely worth trying to understand them behind the practice pad. So I'm just gonna give you two examples that just help you build um, the raw feeling of what a quintuplet is like. Uh, so just before we get started, make sure that you download the sheet music in the YouTube description. Uh, download it and get ready to drum along with me. So the first example really is about understanding what a quintuplet is. And before I tell you that, I'm gonna show you what I don't want you to do today, which is if you take a, uh, a bar of 16th notes, one E and a, What I don't want you to do is pretend like you're accenting every six, uh, sorry, every five notes uh, like this. So what you're essentially doing there is 16th notes in groupings of five, which isn't really a quintuplet, um, not what I want to show you guys uh, today. So I'll show you again, this is not what we're looking for. which is where the accent moves every five notes within 16th notes. Um, so if you check out example one, you'll see that you're playing four quintuplets uh, back to back, which means a consistent stroke of five notes. Um, so if you imagine a quarter note where you're going one, two, three, four, in every measure of quarter note, you need to play five sub hits, which make up a quintuplet. So that's what I'm gonna get you to feel now. Um, you could sing up to five, or you could sing something like university because it has five syllables. So I'm gonna start by singing five, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, 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 one. University, 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 university one. And just so you can feel the beat, I'm gonna put an accent on every first measure of quintuplet. Okay, so let's introduce a little bit of click. And I'm gonna start off at 70 BPM. Okay, so that's 70 BPM constant quintuplets. Let's just try two more tempos. Uh, we'll go up to, let's say 90. And here we go, let's feel it. And let's feel it at a hundred and twenty. Okay, so that's example one. It's just getting you to feel a raw quintuplet against the click. I've got one more pad exercise for you guys, and that is. If you look at example two, the objective of this one is to get you feeling a quintuplet against a rhythm that you're very familiar with, hopefully, which is an eighth note. So the way we're gonna feel this is an eighth note, a quintuplet, an eighth note, a quintuplet. So you kind of get the feeling that you're doing this one and one, two, three, four, five, three, and one, two, three, four, five. Because one and three are eighth notes and two and four are quintuplets. Um, if you can, uh, you can accent where the click would be falling, so you're going to end up with strong numbers, 
one and one, two, three, four, five, one and one, two, three, four, five. And it will feel like uh, you're always accenting where the beat will fall. So I'll just show you this without the click first. All right, and because it's a quintuplet, which is a group of uh, five notes, you're gonna feel like it moves from side to side, um, which is just the nature of when you're using single strokes with an odd number. So let's bring in the click again, and we'll start at 70 BPM. Here we go. Okay, let's gradually get quicker. We'll try it at 90 BPM. And finally, test yourself with a bit of speed at 120. Okay, good. So those two exercises, um, just getting used to feeling what a quintuplet's like. We're still in 4-4 four, four time, so we're not doing anything weird with the time signature. It's just to get you feeling against, uh, against a quarter note click. So make sure you've got that down before you consider trying this on the drum kit. But let's go check out example three, and we're gonna go and jump on the drums. So for example three, we're sat behind the kit, and we're gonna learn how to throw a quintuplet in against a normal batch of eighth notes. So make sure that you really have nailed example one and two, so you can feel what it's like to play a quintuplet against a quarter note. So this example is fairly straightforward. You're gonna go one and two and, which are eighth notes, and then beats three and four are gonna be played as quintuplets. So I'll play it without a click just to begin with, but it pretty much form, like forms the foundation of what I need you guys to nail before we move on to parts three, sorry, parts two and four, three. Here we go. All right, so again, basic groove, but it's the foundation and it will help you in videos that I'm gonna be releasing soon. So let's bring in the click. Let's start at 70 BPM. Okay, and see how you get on. Okay, we're gonna push that up to 90. And finally, we'll try a faster tempo, 120. Just watch out for those quintuplets. Okay, good luck with that one. Let's move on to example four. So this is gonna really help you out in part two. And what we're gonna start doing is exploring different positions for the bass drum within the quintuplet. So look at example four and you'll see that we've got one and two and, that's just like our groove setup. And then when we get to beat three, on our first quintuplet, on the first and third quintuplet, we're gonna play bass drum. So you end up with this which lines up with the right hand, 
And then when you get to the fourth quintuplet on beat four, um, you're gonna end up with a left hand on the snare and then a foot again on the third quintuplet, which looks like this. Which makes it a bit harder because you just gotta have good target practice for the left hand and bass joining together. Anyway, I'll play it slowly first without a click and then we'll jump in with the metronome. So it almost sounds displaced. It's got a bit of a, like the symmetry isn't very obvious, um, but you know, practice makes perfect. It's all about hitting the target correctly around the five. Anyway, let's jump in at 70 BPM. And up to 90. Okay, and the last exercise today, we're gonna to try at 120. Just watch out for your precision with the fives. All right, great guys. Uh, so hopefully you'll get on all right with those four exercises. Just build it up slowly, just build a foundation of what it's like to feel a quintuplet against the click, and I'm sure you'll get on fine. So that's all the examples today, but this will be a multi-part series, so be sure to check back uh, every week or two to see if I've uploaded. Um, leave any questions in the comments below. Uh, feel free to ask me anything, and I'll try my best to get back to you. Follow me on all the social media, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.